welcome to Comics with Dan. This is the Comics Commute. Uh, I'm combining the new comics of the week and the Comics Commute together this week uh, just because I haven't really had a whole lot of time to research and create the, the content that I was hoping for. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about, uh, about a few of the books that I'm looking forward to this week and then also talk a little bit about what I've read so far this week or this past week. So the, the two books on my pull list this week are uh, The Spectacular Spider-Man number one and Void Rivals number seven. Uh, I'm extremely hyped that Void Rivals is back. Uh, it feels like it's been forever since the last issue. Um, it's, it hasn't really been that long, it's just a couple months, but uh, I'm excited for this new arc to get underway. I'm excited to see how Void Rivals starts tying into Transformers and the G.I. Joe comics. I mean, we've already seen um, we've already seen Jetfire and Void Rivals and, and a few other a few other folks. But um, I, I really just think that Void Rivals is just a really solid uh, sci-fi series. And I think, uh, based on how issue number six ended, I think number seven should be a pretty decent jumping on point. Um, I'm, I imagine they'll give some kind of background to it. So, uh, if you haven't checked out one through six yet, you could probably still pick up number seven on uh, pick up number seven tomorrow, uh, and then maybe find the trade somewhere. But overall, I think um, I think that that's probably the one I'm looking forward to the most this week. Uh, the other one that's on my list, uh, The Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, my understanding is that Greg Wiseman is the creator of The Spectacular Spider-Man TV show, which I had never seen, but my understanding is that it's a, you know, a kid-friendly cartoon and, um, and that uh, this book should probably follow suit, which is, which is exciting because, as, as some of you know, I've got five kids and I really like to share, you know, comics with them, especially ones that kind of are split between the, uh, the specifically for kids and, uh, for adults, right? So this spectacular Spider-Man looks like it could be one that's good for kids, good for adults. So it'll be nice for us to share together. Uh, it'll have Peter Parker and Miles Morales in it. Uh, my understanding is that it's canon to the 616 universe, which is cool. Um, so then it'll be uh, a nice uh, introduction to uh, sort of the mainstream ongoing comics for, for my kids. So currently, uh, the only thing I've really been getting for them, I've gotten uh, Darkwing Duck, I've gotten uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Saturday Morning Adventures, uh, which again, those are both, you know, great books, but they're, they're limited series. So uh, this will be a, a nice introduction to sort of an ongoing. I'm also, uh, in addition to the two books on my pull list, I'm thinking about picking up uh, Birds of Prey number seven. Uh, I think that it, it's the start of a new arc and it looks like that uh, Barbara Gordon is back. Uh, now my understanding is that she's back as Oracle, but also on the cover, she's Batgirl. So I'm not really sure how that's gonna work. Uh, I didn't finish out the the arc from the first, or the, I didn't finish out the first arc. Uh, the the uh, I read the first couple issues on uh, DC Universe Infinite Ultra, and then uh, and once I had to drop that service, uh, I I, had, I didn't pick the series back up. Um, but I think Romero on the art is just it, it's fantastic uh, from everything else that I've seen. Uh, I'm a big <laughs> I'm a big, big Barda fan, um, just from uh, the JLI days and uh, from Mr. Miracle. So, I'm excited to get some some more some more content with her in it. Uh, so, that's another one that I'll probably check out. Now, what I read this past week is I finished up Slow Burn, which I'm thinking about doing a, a long form video review of that whole series. Uh, it's a series from Boom Studios. Uh, what initially grabbed my attention about it was uh, the fact that it, the initial solicit said it's set in a old Pennsylvania mining town 
uh, where a fire has been burning underneath the town for years and has been completely evacuated. And for those of you that don't know, um, there is a town like that in Pennsylvania that has a population of, I think, maybe 10 people uh, because the government can't make them move. And um, it's been essentially abandoned for that long just because there's there's a coal mine fire underneath the town which is just crazy so I, I having a somewhat of a personal connection to that living in Pennsylvania I uh, I thought that I would check that out uh, I would say that so first of all the town they give the town a different name I don't know if they needed like rights or something or or whatever but they gave it a different name which I was slightly disappointed by but I wasn't gonna let it you know ruin the whole experience um, and then issue one was extremely slow and pretty vulgar and I think in my initial League of Comic Geeks review I had well, I had an f-bomb counter and there were 27 pages in the comic and there were 27 f-bombs so I, I'm I'm cool with using language if it's using vulgar language if it's going to get your point across uh, or if it feels necessary and maybe it is to this character but that felt pretty excessive and kind of took me out of the story but then uh, once I got to issue number four I started reading number four and I really didn't remember what had happened just because of the way that the story skips around a bit so I set it aside and waited to get number five, and then I read one through five all together, and it was a completely different experience. Uh, so on one hand, you know, I do think that a, a good comic should be able to be read standalone uh, and be enjoyable, and even if you need the context from the story uh, to, to fully understand what's going on, I think it still should be able to be read by itself and it should be enjoyable and leave you wanting to go find the context that you're missing, uh, which I don't think that this series did. But altogether, the series is fantastic, and I, I would highly recommend picking up the uh, the trade whenever that comes out. So uh, it's a I, I have a, I have a longer review. Uh, that I wrote out on uh, League of Comic Geeks. Uh, it's on issue number five, but it's for the whole series. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, it's just a... I, I ended up really enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. I also read Ice Cream Man number 38. Yes, Ice Cream Man no number 38, uh, which was my first scoop of Ice Cream Man. And I thought it was really good. Uh, I I don't know how frequently I'm not, I I like horror but I'm not into the overly graphic bloody horror and that's not what this was. There's obviously you know some you know visual horror but for the most part this was this particular issue was more along the existential line rather than physical. But. Uh, it was a good standalone story. Uh, I added, ended up adding it to my pool list, so I'll be getting 39 next month. Uh, and I'm excited to see kind of where else that takes us. I started reading A Green Lantern by Jeff Johns. Uh, my local library has volumes two through four. Uh, volume one has sort of a couple mini series leading up to the, that particular Green Lantern series. And I've read the first few issues of that Green Lantern series that are captured in Volume 1, so uh, Volume 2 was a natural spot to to leave off. Uh, so I... It, so far, it's pretty good. Um, the story's not over-the-top great, but I'm, I'm kind of giving it some time. Uh, I know John's can be sort of a long-term storyteller, so I, I think that... I think that I'm going to at least give it through volume three and if I'm still not getting it by the end of volume three then I probably won't bother with volume four. I'll have to see if uh, Miles Morales number 17 is uh, in my file whenever I go to pick up my pools tomorrow. Uh, like I said I think the art in that series is worth the price of admission so at the very worst case scenario I'll have a, a nice looking book. 
I'm going to post this video on Tuesday, uh, and I'm hoping to have the Night Thrasher video completed either Wednesday or Thursday. I've, I've recorded the whole thing. Uh, I'm in the editing process now. I've, I've edited a good piece of it. I uh, just need to finish it up. And I really hope that uh, everyone enjoys it, and I, I know that I really enjoyed making it and researching it. Uh, I also picked up from my library uh, The Many Deaths of Layla Starr, which uh, everyone on the League of Comic Geese has been ranting and raving about, uh, about how great it is, so I'm excited that the library had it. Uh, I, it's, it's in this larger, I don't know if it's considered a treasury format or not, I'll, I'll have to look it up and see, um, but it's certainly, the page size is a lot larger than uh, than the books I'm used to reading. So I'm kind of excited to experience that. Um, but I'll probably finish up uh, Volume 2 of Green Lantern, and then I'll take that on. Uh, I also got, I believe it's called A Week in the Library uh, by W. Maxwell Prince, uh, who's the writer for Ice Cream Man. Uh, so it's another horror book, uh, and I it looks pretty good. Uh, I Honestly, I was just searching for prints on the uh, library website and they didn't have any ice cream man but they had that book so I thought I'd check that one out and that it'd be worth worth looking into and I also have uh, I believe it's called uh, the forgotten man uh, which is a black and white uh, graphic novel about uh, the Great Depression uh, and my my understanding looks like I'll put the name of the writer up here because it's not a writer that I have any experience with, but it says adapted by Chuck Dixon, so I don't know if she's writing it and uh, he adapted it. I'm guessing maybe that it was originally a novel that she wrote and he just adapted it to the, uh, to the graphic novel format. Uh, so that one's uh, I'm pretty interested in uh, checking out. Uh, I got that from the library as well. So... The last historical book I read was about Tommy Smith, the Olympic sprinter, uh, and and it was pretty well done. Uh, it was also a black and white, uh, and uh, it was I enjoyed it. So uh, I, I'm hoping I'll I'll enjoy this one too. It's pretty a pretty powerful subject. So uh, we'll see we'll see how well it's done. I'm thinking of adding a few new types of videos to the channel. Uh, so I already started one, uh, which was the Comics Glossary. So for beginners, uh, it'll allow people to learn, uh, you know, the terminology that comic book fans use uh, to help feel a little less lost and, uh, you know, be able to, I guess, enjoy the hobby a little more without constantly having to wonder what different acronyms mean and uh, what all the different definitions are. Uh, that's from uh, Andy93160 on the League of Comic Geeks, so thanks for that. Uh, he has this great list put together, and I asked him if I could post some of them as YouTube videos, and he gave me the okay. Uh, so I'll be doing that. Uh, another one I'd like to do is uh, another short form video um, called The Dollar Dive, where uh, as I visit different comic stores, uh, I just take a video of me diving through the, the dollar bin and uh, show you what's there. Um, Hopefully I can get some, some good engagement for that, uh, just because I think that if I'm, you know, hunting through a dollar bin and someone sees something cool, uh, then it'll spark some, uh, some comments and say, oh, like, oh, look at that cover you saw there, or look at this book here. Uh, I think it'd be nice. Uh, I think it'd be a good way to get everyone involved. Uh, and then the last one, which I mentioned on the League of Comic Geeks, and I'm really, really excited about, is hosting, uh, I think I might do it monthly, uh, a monthly comic trivia. Uh, and so what it would be is I would have, I think, three guests. Uh, I, I would like to structure it similar to Jeopardy, where uh, you have uh, you know certain points and the harder the questions are, the more points you get. Uh, I won't have people answering questions, so that's, that's not on the table. Uh, but then uh, I'll post it live on YouTube and I'll have three contestants and uh, the winner uh, will will receive uh, a comic book that I pick out uh, which might have to do with a certain theme for the questions or something like that 
Uh, it won't be anything super valuable or anything like that. Um, just because we're still in the early stages of the channel. So, but it'll be a fun way to get the, the community engaged with the channel and, and get people watching. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, like I said, I already started the glossary one. And I think that the, uh, ideally I'd like to start the trivia, the trivia videos over the summer. Uh, I definitely want to get a lot ready for that ahead of time because I do know that if I don't prepare for those ahead of time that it's going to be a lot of work leading up to them and I, it might cause the other, the other content that I'm planning to put out to suffer a bit. So, alright, well, that is the majority of my commute and... I hope that everyone enjoyed the video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Please share the channel, share the video. Uh, let anybody that is a comic fan know about the, the channel. And even if they're not a comic fan, uh, I'm hoping videos like the Comic Glossary can uh, help get new fans brought in. So uh, I appreciate uh, everyone's support and thanks for watching.